folks, how are we all doing? Welcome back to Storytime with Captain Dan. Lovely to be back here with your shipmates. It's lovely to be back. Special shout out to today to Millie, a good friend of mine and her mum Stacey who are doing wonderful, wonderful work. If you want any more greetings or any requests, please send them in to me. I like to share stories that people like. And today's story is particularly for Millie. It's from the wonderful Roger Hargreaves, and it's called Mr. Tickle. A favourite of mine too, I must admit. You've got to watch out for Mr. Tickle because he's a bit naughty, you know. He can be very, very naughty indeed. So this is Mr. Tickle. It was a warm, warm, sunny morning. In his small house at the other side of the wood, Mr. Tickle was asleep. There's his little small house. You didn't know that there was such a thing as a tickle, did you? Well, there is. Tickles are small and round and they have arms that stretch and stretch and stretch and stretch. Extraordinary long, long arms. They're orange as well. Can't see the end of their arms, can you? Mr. Tickle was fast asleep. He was having a dream. It must have been a very, very funny dream because it made him laugh out loud. So loud that it woke him up. He sat up in bed, stretched out his extraordinary long arms and yawned an enormous yawn. Mr. Tickle felt hungry. Do you know what he did? He reached out his extraordinary long arms. He opened the bedroom door, reached down the stairs, opened the kitchen door, reached into the kitchen cupboard, opened the biscuit tin, looked, took out a biscuit. Brought the biscuit back upstairs, in through the bedroom door, and back to Mr. Tickle's bed. As you can see, it's ever so useful indeed, having arms as long as Mr. Tickle's. Mr. Tickle munched on his biscuit, and he looked out of the window. Today... It's very much like a tickling day, he thought to himself. So later that morning, after Mr. Tickle has made his bed, he was a good tickle, and cooked his breakfast, he set off through the wood. As he walked along, he kept his eyes wide, wide open, looking for someone to tickle, looking for anybody to tickle. Eventually, Mr. Tickle came to school. There was nobody about, so reaching up his extraordinary long arms to a very high window ledge. Mr. Tickle pulled himself up and peeked through the open window. Inside he could see a classroom. There were children sitting at their desk and a teacher writing on the blackboard. Mr. Tickle waited a minute and then reached in through the window. Mr. Tickle's extraordinary long arm went right up to the teacher, paused, and then tickled, tickled and tickled. The teacher jumped in the air and turned around, very quick to see who was there. But there was nobody there. There was nobody there. Mr. Tickle grinned mischievous grin. He waited another minute 
And then he tickled the teacher again. This time he kept on tickling him too. Soon the teacher was laughing out loud and said, Stop it, stop it, over and over again. And all the children were laughing and laughing. It was just... There was terrible, terrible pandemonium. That's got nothing to do with pandas, by the way. Or Imodium. Something completely different. Eventually, Mr. Tickle thought he had had enough fun. So he gave the teacher just one more tickle, just for good luck, and then quietly brought his arm through the open window. And chuckling to himself, he jumped down from the window, leaving the poor teacher to explain what it was all about. And teachers aren't always good at that, you know. Which, of course, the teacher just could not do. And then Mr. Tickle went to town. And what a day Mr. Tickle had. He tickled the policeman while he was on traffic duty at the crossroads in the middle of town. He caused an enormous traffic jam. He tickled the green grocer just as he was piling apples neatly in the shop window. The green grocer fell over backwards and apples rolled all over the shop. At the railway station, the guard was about to wave his flag for the train to leave. But as he lifted his arm in the air, Mr. Tickle tickled him. And every time he tried to wave his flag, he tickled him again. Until the train was ten minutes late in leaving the station. And all the passengers were furious. People aren't very patient, you know. That day, Mr. Tickle tickled everybody. He tickled the doctor. He tickled the butcher. He even tickled old Mr. Stamp, the postman, who dropped all his letters in a puddle. And then Mr. Tickle, Mr. Tickle went home. Sitting in his armchair in his small house at the other side of the wood, he laughed and laughed. Every time that he thought about all the people that he tickled that day. Oh, he laughed and he laughed and he laughed and he laughed. So, if any of you are in any way ticklish, beware of Mr. Tickle and those extraordinary long arms of his. Just think. Perhaps he's somewhere about at this very moment, while you're listening to me read this book, beware, beware, because he might just come and tickle you. Perhaps that extraordinary long arm of his is already creeping up the door of this room. Perhaps it's opening the door coming into the room. Perhaps before you know what's happening, you will be well and truly tickled. Beware, beware, beware. So that's the story of Mr. Tickle and the classic Mr. Men books by Roger Hargreaves. My friend Adrian's a big Mr. Man fan, but he's not really a Mr. Tickle, are you? I'm told he's more of a Mr. Grumpy from what I hear. Maybe one day I'll read that one for him, if, if he would like me to. But that's enough for today, for tonight. So rest easy, boys and girls, whatever age you are. Good night, good night, oh sweet repose. Don't lie on your belly.
as you might squash your nose. Good night.